Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl Different and welcome to Difference World. And for today's vlog, I'm going to be sharing with you all my audio interview with the host, Mr. Indeed of Ramble, Young Man Ramble. I had a very good time talking with him on his podcast about my new book, What If? A Controversial Paradigm Shift, which is on sale now at my website, differenceworld.net. So once you get done watching this video here, head on over to my website and get your copy. Check it out. It's going good. It's going good. Thank you for having me. Hello to yes. everybody out there listening and watching. Yes, yes, yes. This is another episode of Ramble, Young Man Ramble, with your host, Ramble Indeed. And today I brought different. I brought different, not just in her name, but in her whole vibe. And, you know, the message that she's bringing to you is something that you need to know. So um, thank you for reaching out to us on our RYMR. And we're very honored to have you here because you have a message that needs to come out and needs to be heard. And um, if you could just explain to us who you are, I know I can say it, but I think you'd say it way better than I do. Go All for right. it. All right. Thank you so much, Miss Indy. Um, yes, sir. Just right back at you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity and allowing me to come on your show and, and ramble with you and um, just and allow me to um, share with you all um, a project that's near and dear to my heart and something that's been in the works for a while and that I feel it's time to, you know, share with the world. And, you know, giving you guys just a little bit of background of myself. My name is Different, it's spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T. I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm 30 years old. I'm a graduate of Sam Houston State University. Um, I guess you could say about me, I'm, I'm a woman of many hats, if you will. Um, I have my, <clears throat> excuse me, my master's in uh, entrepreneurship. I have my BA in international business with two minors in business com and economics. And I'm also a Texas real estate agent. Um, oh, okay. That's yeah. a mouthful. <laughs> like I said, yeah, I'm a woman of many hats. Um, coming up, I had a tough upbringing, but I overcome it, you know, just as, you know, a real soldier supposed to. Um, what made it so tough? Say it again. What made it so tough? Um, I overcome, you know, homelessness and foster care at uh, age 11. You know, I had a pretty good upbringing up until that age. And then, you know, I ended up on the streets with uh, me and my mom and my brother. Uh, for three years, we really literally uh, lived basically pillow to post, you know, sleeping everywhere, you know, cars, parks, shelters, bus stops, strangers' houses, relatives. And, you know, mind you, I'm 11, going through, through 13, you know, we, we went through this for about three years and up until the time I was 14, I um, I was secretly placed in foster care by a relative. <clears throat> and so, yeah, none of my other family members knew where I was uh, for the first six months that I was there. And during those first six months that I was there, I, I tried my best to uh, come home, if you will, but then I ended up finding out that the state of Texas, they paid for, you know, kids who aged out of foster care their full ride to college for free. Um, so a light bulb went out in my head right then and there. And uh, I decided to use my street smarts to elevate my book smarts and just decided to, you know, do got those four years in foster care so that I would be able to go to college for a full free ride. And I did just that. And I make no regrets about it because look at me now, you know. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, um, which led me to some of my hobbies, you know, um, I love to travel. Um, before the pandemic, I was almost up to about 50 countries. Um, what else? I love reading, writing, watching Shark Tank. <laughs> That's my favorite show. Uh, one of my favorite shows, if you will. Um, I'm a very adventurous person. I love ATV riding. Uh, anything, you know, that's daredevil like, I love to do it. Uh, and then, uh, spending time with my nephew, uh, who's my best friend. Shout out to him. <laughs> Gotta give him a good shout out because he's also involved in the project as well. You have a um, bright energy about you, I must say. Well, thank and, you. Um, thank you. I, I no, don't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Oh, no, no problem. And um, I see that your name is different, but you, you have a LLC that mm -hmm. is your, your business that is basically distributing your books and uh, things like that? Yes, sir. So um, the way my, my company, Third Eye Entertainment LLC, started, it actually started by accident. 
but it, it, it was just had to be God's plan the way that it, it panned out. Um, <clears throat> going back into a little bit of my background, um, coming my upbringing, you know, it was being tough in, 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 in my childhood. Um, for me, I know it's going to sound a little unorthodox and, and a little crazy, but I, I grew up around chaos. And, you know, I grew up in a neighborhood called Fifth Ward. You know, it's a silent but deadly neighborhood. And, and when I was taken out of that situation and placed in foster care, I was actually placed in, in really good homes, and um, it, it was it wasn't normal to me. Chaos was normal to me, and so I squandered every you know good thing I had going for me that that came my way. I squandered it, even into my adult years, and so until the point where it pushed me to face my my biggest enemy, myself, and and to attack uh, tackle my mental health issues and, and go get them fixed. And so I dismissed that notion. That a lot of us, us in the black community, grow up around that you know black people don't do therapy or don't, we don't go get help. We don't talk about our issues. Um, so I just said, "Bump that! I'm gonna go fix my issues and get me together because I know what I'm meant to do in this life and what I'm supposed to do, and I'm not gonna let my past hold me back any longer." And mm. so while in therapy and talking with my therapist, he encouraged me, and, and shout out to him as well because he's also involved in the project too. Um, he encouraged me, you know, to channel all that negative energy into something positive. And, gotcha. and that ended up, you know, being my book, um, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. But back to the company, just jumping over a little bit, the way that the company started was by accident. It didn't happen until after I finished the book and I contacted my lawyer. And um, she asked me, um, so what's the name of your business? And I'm like, uh, huh, what, what do you mean? This is a... My book, my book, that's, that's the name, that's, I was telling her, you know, it's my book. And she's like, oh, no, I don't think you understand. You're going to need a business, or you're going to have to have an LLC, so that way, you know, when you do start selling your books, if anything happens, they don't come after your personal funds, they can only come after your business. And so, one thing about life is, like, when you think you got a handle on it, it you nope, know, it comes back through and knocks you off and reminds you that, you know, you don't know shit. <laughs> and so I had to learn really quickly and fastly, you know, what's the LLC, what I need to do, this, this, and that. And so this year, as of March 2021, I formed my my, my company, Third Eye Entertainment, and it came from um, uh, a part of who I am that likes to, like I said, one of my hobbies is meditating and praying, and so I do a big part of that. Um, and that's where third eye came from because, you know, when you're in the difference world, you see what my third eye see. And so third eye entertainment is a company that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services that educates, inspires, and entertains all at once. And so we have, uh, that's our, our creed that we have. We also have a motto that we, we tell our, our audience and it's called manifest, plan, prepare reason being is because we believe in order for our anybody who wants to achieve the success they want in life, they have to manifest for what they believe and what they see in their mind and heart to come into existence. Yep. Then they have to plan for what they want. Plan it all out, right? Get it on paper. Put words to action. Put actions to words, excuse me. And then afterwards, prepare for what you're about to receive. So therefore, manifest, plan, prepare. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And when you say, uh, I like the fact that you put everything into order and, and that you uh, give people structure. And I, I see you have a lot of structure in your life as well. I'm sure that's probably helped you out. Oh, it's very necessary for me because if I didn't have the structure uh, or the discipline for my family, and, and that was the thing that I was lacking early on. And so once, like I said, I got myself together, got it together up top, I was able to get my heart right and, and just build a foundation that had good structure, if you will. Definitely. And I'm just glad. So what is your book? Give them the title of your book again, please. It's called What If. Uh, the, well, the, the main title was What If? Question mark, And then the subtitle is The Controversial Paradigm Shift. It's one of the first products that we have at the company. We also, I mentioned it's a service and product uh, business. On the service side, we offer motivational speaking and we touch on issues and topics. Um, I'm sorry, excuse me, we offer um, published and written, excuse me, video material 
that touches on topics such as systemic racism, injustice, LGBTQ issues, uh, gender equality issues, child advocacy, women's rights, uh, voters' rights, issues that, you know, that are of the world that need to be brought to light, you know, that bring social awareness. Um, so when I say what if, is it saying, like, you're saying, yeah, put my shoes on and see how they fit? In a way, but in, in the sense of sticking to our mission, this book will educate, inspire, and, 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 and entertain you, if you will. <laughs> I know it's going to not a lot of some people are not going to like it, but for those who who understand and get the gist of where I'm coming from, they will be entertained, if you will. So, um, yes. So the main product that we have, or the project that we have going on right now, is what if a controversial paradigm shift. But before I get into that, I, I must say that we also have other products in association with this main project. What if um, online on our website, we will be selling merchandise in association with the book such as coffee mugs, t-shirts, hats, face masks, bookmarks, um, other things as well. And so uh, later on, I'll give you guys that information on where you can go uh, to buy it. Um, but back to the main project that we have, What If Controversial Paradigm Shift. Um, it's a book written to and inform and encourage thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America uh, through graphic but provocative illustrations. Um, it details the perspective um, on controversial deaths and events that have occurred in the African American community over time. Um, and the way that I have them set up, I have them set up in four main categorized paradigms hypothetical, political, precedent, and then, excuse me, excuse me, so sorry. The first paradigm is historical, the second one's political, excuse me, political, precedent, and then hypothetical. Okay. Each of those paradigms, there are sub paradigms. Um, and so, for example, the first paradigm we have historical, and, and then the sub paradigm we have in, in, in hypothetical, excuse me, I'm sorry, historical is going to be thanks for all your help. Mm -hmm. And so, the question that we ask for that is what if, you know, it was poor white folks that had, I'm sorry, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Pardon for the technical difficulties, everybody. It happens in a part of a show. Bear with us, but we're we're just digging deep into her book because her book is something about when I when I hear the title, it automatically makes me think of compassion. I want to I want to pull up the actual question so I don't get it wrong. I want to read from the book. That's why I do apologize. Give me a second. It's all good. But like I'll say, it's all about, I feel, compassion. It makes me also think of the movie A Time to Kill. Yes, that's, um, if you ask the question, what inspired me to write this book or what motivated me to write this book, it was a, a plethora of things, but, you know, the main issues or one of the main issues would have been with George Floyd, you know, the death of him, and, um, the, the dismissal that we have uh, in, in the, the society that we live in when these issues come up. Um, so, for example, when the death of George Floyd happened, all I was hearing on the other side, you know, most white folks, they would say, well, why are these people out here protesting knowing that there's a pandemic going on? They don't care about the pandemic. They failed to mention anything about, you know, another innocent, unarmed black man dying. But uh, I do have a question, the question that I was talking about. Let's get back to the historical paradigm. So the question reads, what if the health consisted of poor white people working for a wealthy black family? wherein white housemaids nurse black babies and white male shoe shiners spend hours shining black men's shoes. Not to mention, they often face racial hardship with underpaid and receive no medical benefits while earning a living. Mm -hmm. And so that's a question I would ask in the hypothetical, excuse me, historical paradigm. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so it just is basically, it has the reversal, the race is reversed. You know, what if this happened to white people instead of black? You know? So you basically, you, you ask the question that people really don't want to answer. Like, won't mm -hmm. you look at this before you give me any type of treatment? Think about it if it was happening to you. Exactly. Um, I ask the questions that are often, you know, swept under the rug or, you know, considered taboo. You know, even in itself with systemic racism, people don't like to talk about it. Well, a, a certain type of people. I don't want to, you know, attack, make it seem like I'm attacking. I, I must say this book does include a disclaimer. 
it's not intended to, you know, in cause incite any type of, you know, racial intention towards any type of race or specific group. Again, this book was written to encourage and stimulate constant thought-provoking conversations about systemic racism between the groups in America, not just with blacks and whites, but with all of us. You know, I'm not just, I'm talking mainly about what black people went through, but you can apply this paradigm to any race, any, you know, creed, gender, you know, orientation, if you will, what this happened, you know, to straight people. Mm -hmm. um, and so also within, you know, the political paradigm, I would ask a question, you know, such as um, with the kickbacks, I have it set up as just kickbacks and relax. And so with that question, I ask, you know, what if the American judicial system was systematically built to keep white males in jail or prison at a much higher rate than black males? You know, because they have, you know, that's very well true. They keep, you know, black men. In have you ever done another control? Have you ever done um, census or uh, what, polls? Have you ever done any polls? That's kind of funny that you mentioned that. Before the pandemic, I actually worked with the U.S. Census. That mm. is deep. And, um, and we used to do, well, there are surveys that do crime and statistical uh, surveying, but I actually worked in the housing. You know, this book also, one of my favorite quotes is, you want to know who somebody is, you give them power. Mm -hmm. And um, who said that? This, tell you, I don't know who said it. I just it always stuck to me. Got and you. I look at that in many different ways because I see that a lot of times. Like someone can have small, small power as far as you have a car, I don't. And, you know, I might need someone to take me to the store or something like that. And you see how someone might act. Or mm -hmm. someone might need someone to, somewhere to stay, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And it's like you see who someone is when they can affect someone else's life without getting anything back from it. Exactly. You know, exactly. It's just you're doing a kind just because you feel, you know what, you deserve this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I think that I would love it for myself. So, hey, you, you, you go and sample my good blessings and my good fortune. Well, I thank you. I, I do appreciate that. And I will say this, uh, the funny thing about it, I did do, you know, my research on this, although I am, you know, jumbled up in my words a little bit. I did do my research. I did a test market analysis um, with a sample size audience of 75 people. The majority of them were African American. And um, out of those African American, you know, there was a high percentage of them. So I feel with our community, this book will resonate with them most and they will love this and this would be something that they can use and unfortunately at the next protest we'll have for an un and a death of an innocent unarmed black person in America. Unfortunately, um, we know that's going to happen again. And um, I hate that, that it does, but when it does, they can use these illustrations to help show our frustration, you know, and what we're tired of experiencing in America and what we want is change, you know. Oh, I'm glad you're taking this purpose on as well, because people don't understand that we need all the hands inside the pot. You can't just be, you gotta be everybody. And it can't just be our own complexion. It has to be the sympathy, the compassion, the high moral integrity mm -hmm. of all races for people to wanna care and to actually do some change. Mm -hmm. And, um, exactly. you know. and it's, it's, it's going to take, and, and one thing I've learned with working with the Census Bureau is that change doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't happen just by one voice. What I've learned um, with working with that job, change does happen. It just takes time. One person complaining about it. And so we all have to come together, black, white, you know, Asian. Hispanic, everybody, all of us, all of us that live in this, this wonderful land that we call America. You know, if this is our home and, and peace, they say home is what heart is and you want to have peace in your heart. You know, we have to, we have to. And I know it's uncomfortable. A lot of us are are, are, are comfortable in our lives and what, where we're at and what we're taught and what we're brought up with and, 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 and like complacency. A lot of us don't like to admit it. They just say, you know, hey, it is what it is, but 
in, in reality, that's what they're saying. I like being complacent. And so this book, again, like I said, the way I have it set up is meant to educate, inspire, and motivate. And what if it motivates you in a negative or a positive manner? Once a bell has been rung, you can't unring a bell. I um, agree. And so um, a lot of people say, well, you're going to piss a lot of people off. They're not going to like this. Or you, you're going to make yourself mad. You're going to put a target on your back. Well, one thing I'll say with that, either or, you know, it is, like I said, once the bell's been rung, it's been rung. And then one thing I've learned from, from number 45, you know, that's my, my title form is what I call him, the previous one um, in office. I never acknowledged him as mine, so he, he's not, he was never my president, so I call him number 45. Um, one thing I've learned from him is to go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. Oh. At the end of his one term, little four years in office, even in his last little three months, you know, causing it a daily insurrection, you know, refusing to accept defeat, you know, still being petty about things, you know, as, as old as he is, this man still had 75 plus million people rocking with him and condoning his BS. And so that right there shows me that with this book, with what I'm doing, whether people like it or not, whether it's a high number of people who talk bad about this book or not, it's still going to be a, a, a huge amount of people out there that are going to love this book no matter what. So, again, go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. So I'm not worried about the haters. I'm not worried about the critics or, you know, what anybody, you know, Rush Limbaugh or, or whoever else would try to turn this book into and say, oh, this is a tool used to for the black community to inspire them to uprise against us. No, it is not. This is meant to tip your hat, meant to push your butt, meant to make you think, what if this happened to you guys? What if it happened to us the way that it still happened to us? Well, I love the way you say, put on minds. You know, here's mine. See, see what I see, what, what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm, and exactly. a lot of times, you know, I mean, let keep it real, man. Uh, Whatever oppressor might be, it might be white, it might be even your own kind. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, I think the oppressor don't have feelings, you know, don't care. Who cares about his own self gratification? And I don't know where we're going in this world as far as loving each other, because it, it's so many different, so many different causes that are getting taken before ours, you know, and, and I don't know a lot of times is it done so it can get us off track because mm -hmm. the cause of racism is still here. Mm -hmm. the, our cause of even being treated as humans is still our fight. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many other fights that's going on right now that I think ours is getting muddled up where they're not seeing like ours is even still real. Exactly, and and not to cut you off, but I think with this book, I feel in my heart, I'm confident this is what God anointed me to do, to to put it in a way, in a form that, that they can't deny it. They can't turn their they, they heads away from it. Whether mm -hmm. somebody talking about it good or bad, they're going to be like, let me go and see what this person writing and talking about. So there's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide from it. So with this indeed, they... They, they can't run from this, you know, this, this, if you ever uh, heard of the book, Black Cotton, anybody out there listening, um, if you haven't, I definitely encourage you guys to go and read it. It's a very informative book. It's similar to mine. It's actually kind of a little bit of inspiration where I got What If from. Um, the difference between Black Cotton and What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift is Black Cotton, for me, uh, the, vice, the difference is, the variant is, it's the softened version. It softens the blow. My book gives it raw, gives it to you raw and uncut and unfiltered. The illustrations are meant to make you cringe when you first see them, and, 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 and into a way that you have no choice but to share your opinion about it. And once you, you know, share your opinion, then that's when the conversation will start because somebody is going to counter that opinion and say, "Well, I feel different. This is what I think." This is how I feel. And boom, there you have it. That's where the conversation will start. You're right. I think what gets us talking mm -hmm. is saying the stuff that we all thinking 
and we're going, I don't know if this is the right time or place. I don't know, but it is. It's always the right time or place. Time it's not is now, not. then, then. Exactly. So to see that you're bringing the issues to the forefront and, and making people talk. You know, the talk is not always going to be pretty. Sometimes oh. the talk is going to lead to aggression. It's going to lead to us saying, you know, I don't like this person. Probably at first. You know, one thing I've learned is you can't teach understanding. Mm -hmm. You can teach what you know by example, what you do, what you say, and making those things add up together. And people can get their own perception even then. Because you can be showing them all good, and in their eyes, they're going, that person thinks they're too good for their own self. And you're like, you know, so it's like perception is somebody's reality through their own eyes. So all you can do is just give them what you know through what you live, through how you're living and what you're doing. And then at the end of the day, they'll get their own understanding of those examples that you let that you let be. And hey. I'm just glad that you're putting it facts. out there. Facts, facts. Because you can't control what someone, how someone's going to think about it and how they're going to view you. Exactly, and, and I'm not here. I don't. I don't care what people are to think of me. You know, I'm here to do a job, and you know, to, to ring that bell. To me, like I said, when my my company manifests, plan, preparing, so I practice what I preach, or at least try. For me, with this book, I am manifesting that it changed the lives of millions. That I'm manifesting that this book, you know, wins awards, you know, such as the Nobel Peace Prize. I am manifesting that this book gets turned into, you know, a TV miniseries and, you know, it just takes off from there and, you know, people, even when I'm long gone, you know, that's another reason why I decided to write that book is when the death of George Floyd happened. I wanted to go and protest and get involved, but in that time I thought, well, I want my voice to stand long after, you know, this moment is over with. And so this book, even when I'm dead and gone, it will still be here. It will still tell our story even when they don't want to. And so I, I'm, I'm blessed and highly favored and, and grateful to be allowed and anointed by the man upstairs to be the one to, to bring it to light, even if it costs me. In the end, sometimes you got to suffer for what is right, even if, you know, it, it costs you in the long run. You, you have to do what you got to do. And so well for me, this is me practicing what I preach. You know, this is with my third eye. You know, feels and sees, and you know when you come into different world, this is what you get. And so, um, you you mentioned you know trying to change the perception of people. Well, that's not my job. That's not what I'm here for. What you see is what you get. And so, and if you don't like it, you keep it moving. You move around from me, you know, because I'm I'm an alpha male. I, excuse me, <laughs> alpha female, and yeah. make no apologies about it. So, no, you do what you have to do. You, know, yeah. you make the cards on the table, and if you have a great righteous intention, then mm -hmm. that will show forth at the end, even if it's not accepted. But it will it will reign supreme at the end. Yeah, yeah. All, I'm, I'm all of our leaders, all of our leaders, that even if it wasn't accepted while they were doing it, at the end, what stood tall and what stood permanent is their great righteous intention. Mm -hmm. You know. More, the King, uh, Marcus Garvey, uh, Malcolm yeah. X, um, all these prophets and all these leaders, mm -hmm. they spoke for us and they weren't liked at that time. They were hated at that time. Muhammad Ali hated at that time. Oh, yeah. You know, Farrakhan yeah. hated right about that. And by some, and point being is what we stand for will remain. Of course. No matter what they say about you, no matter what pictures they try to put up of you to discredit who you are, who you really are will remain is what I've noticed. No? Mm -hmm. Pretty much so. Always oh, yeah. think words and your actions, when those things meet together, you will be hard to stop. And Facts. I ain't no argument there. No, no matter what they say about you, so. You just keep. I love the fact that you're you're you're, fo you're following your righteous intention, your good intention. You know, it it's must like, be said. Like John Lewis said, you know, look good trouble never hurt nobody. And so this is what I, I feel. This is good trouble, if you will. It's worth it. I mean, and, and it, if not this time, then when? If yep. not me, then who? You know, a lot of people who who I've talked to on the streets, they like what I'm doing, but if if it had to be them. 
they wouldn't tamper with it. They wouldn't get involved. They don't want to rock the boat, if you will. So it takes somebody like me who has alligator skin and that, that that's just built from, you know, tough cloth to do a project like this and bring something to light like this in a manner that is that I'm doing it as. And again, although it's coming off as harsh and provocative on the other side, it tells the truth. Mm -hmm. This is what, you know, what was done to us. It, it's nothing said about it that that's a lie. Only difference is the race is the race role is reversed now. You know, it's happening to white people instead of black people now. Yeah. But I will say this to those those naysayers out there who are only looking at the first few pages of the book. I would say read the book, read the full book, and then pass judgment. Mm -hmm. Even before you read the book, if you hear all the negative words about it, read the book and then pass judgment. Especially and specifically, read the last paradigm, hypothetical paradigm. That's where I tie it all in. That's where my message comes to a head and what I'm trying to bring. What if, you know, these things can happen, you know, in our time? It may not happen now in this generation. That change of us coming together and eradicating systemic racism and injustice in America, it may not happen in this generation. Maybe not for the next. But what if this is the generation that starts and, and then the next generation carries the, joy, the torch and then the next? And then eventually that systemic change will come. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's my ultimate goal. That's my ultimate prayer and hope for this book is that, is that it, it brings the change that we need over time. Mm -hmm. And it will in, in, in this time, but you know, over time it brings it. And not just in America, but all over the world. You know, I want, I want this book to touch the lives of people all over the world. You know, not just in America, because it, it happens everywhere. Gotcha. Um, well, I love the fact that you you fight in the fight, man. We all need to be together on this as one to realize that it can happen to anyone if we allow it. So I think a lot of the other races started noticing that them just standing by and letting it happen to us mm -hmm. end up affecting them as well. And I'm speaking about Asians. I'm speaking about mm -hmm. you know even the Jewish people, I and mean, they noticed that hate gets passed along mm -hmm. you can go around and keep saying oh you know that black guy has nothing to do with me okay you'll find that haters are non-biased really it's oh, just yeah. the hate that they have in them that they need to spew some people just hate you just for walking by them just for looking good you know yes hate is not is not instilled it's taught you're not oh. born with hate it's taught is what you brought up with and and again that's what this book it just brings it all in. It's, it's, it's the blueprint for the next generation, if you will, how we can start, you know, changing where we can start at ground zero. And that's by having the conversations, finally, you know, admitting and, and accepting and taking accountability and then working from there. We can't change the past and what happened. And but we can we can work on now to you know prepare for the future so that it'll be better for our future. Definitely. And have, like I said, I, what I get from your book most is compassion. You know, have compassion for your fellow man. Mm -hmm. Have compassion for knowing that what I'm doing is affecting me. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, there's something I, I read about lying and how lying affects the liar more than the person that they told the lie to. Because the liar, after a while, has to believe their own lies to make it sound believable. Mm -hmm. By doing that, you're erasing the line of reality. And when, you know what? I don't mean to cut you off, but you are very true. Um, coming up, and like I said, being in foster care, being moved around, I was very ashamed of you know that lifestyle and being a foster kid. And so I used to lie about where I lived and where I was from. And at the time, like you said, eventually you start to believe your own lies. <laughs> and so I used to, I lied so much to where I created my own little la-la land and mm -hmm. started living in that. But eventually that bubble got popped and I had to get real. But that's very true. And so I mean, cause when that, you, that's a very true statement. I mean, because when you look at it too, right, when you live in, in that fantasy land, then you're not seeing the line of progression. You'll think anything you do is great. Oh, yeah. You know, you have nothing to That's compare fine. it against. Because a lot of yourself is like, ah, oh, I did enough. 
No, I did good enough. Oh, what I did was the best. If you're not brutally sometimes honest with yourself, then you won't see, one, how far you've came and how far it is to go. So I always think um, the same thing, like what we're saying with this book. If you're not living in a reality, knowing that what I'm doing is also affecting me, that you hate someone is also affecting the person who's doing the hate because that person doesn't see love. How can you love anyone? How can you go, you know what? I love uh, my sister. I love my such and such when you don't even, when you have a hate segment within yourself mm -hmm. and that hate is so strong that you can be like, you know what? I, I hate this person without even knowing that person, what they've been through, who they are, uh, their personality. So what true love can you ever have? Yeah. And for those Take people that I come across like that, I just love on them and I pray for them. They come at me with that dumb stuff, you know, I, I just give them a full, fair warning. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, those people, I'm not going to say I can. I, I was like that once, you know. I'm work, I'm a work in per progress. I'm not a perfect person. But mm -hmm. with this, what I'm doing here, it, it, it and I'm not taking no sides. I'm actually, I'm a neutral person because I actually, you could believe I got both white and black in my family. My grandmother is a white woman. She, she, she loves some black men. You know, she's white and Native American. So I, I can't say and, and say that all white people are racist, but most of those racist people out there are white people. And so and to those people, closed mind, I'm not going to say racist. I just like call them closed minded or colorblind. Um, those people out there, this book, is that I, I definitely want them to hear about this book. I definitely want them to see this book. I know a lot of them aren't going to buy the book. But of course, so much, uh, it's my hope and prayer that they... That so oh, don't say that. Them. Don't say that. They, they're going to buy it. Don't, don't put... Thanks. What you put out in the air is what you will receive as well. You're right. You're right. But I, I'm, a, I'm an optimistic, but I'm also a realist. And so that, that's where part of it comes from. But... It's my hope and prayer, like I said, when they get so much talk about it that they, they hear it and they, they can't help it but to go and read the book or buy the book. So, yes, I, I hear what you're saying, manifesting, speaking the power of the tongue, but um, I'm a realist as well. And so and I know Black people need to read this book, too, because a lot of times we are all the biggest racists. If you had to ask me who my target audience is, I would say the African-American community, adults ages 18 to 35. Um, it resonated most with women, but I know a lot of men would, would relate with this book as well. So um, both men and women and people who care about, you know, bringing social awareness and uh, tackling issues like social, excuse me, systemic racism and injustice in America or all over. If you want to stop saying America, just injustice and systemic racism, period. Mm -hmm. um, so those people, those are my target audience. Those are those are who I'm reaching out to and speaking to and who I want of who I need to help me spread the message. So if you're out there and you're listening, go and read this book, buy this book and share it. Uh, you know, and, and unfortunately, you know, when we the next protest that we'll have to go to because, you know, a police officer and killed another innocent, unarmed black person, use these illustrations to put it in their face to show them our pain and what we're tired of going through. And define people. systemic racism for my audience, please. Say it again. Define systemic racism for my audience, please. So, systemic racism for me, I, I, mean, I can't give you the Webster Dictionary version of because I ain't got it in my face right now, but as far as systemic racism, the unfair and injustice in treatment, I'm not even going to just say just with black people, but majority of black people because, you know, Hispanics and Asians are getting it too. But the unfair and injustice treatment that, you know, the minority community has received over time, the unfairness, you know, that we have been given. Um, I, I appreciate, I will say this, I can see some of the change starting. I see those commercials out there now that are, you know, starting to support the black businesses out there and starting to get involved and be more socially aware. So I will say I do see those people out there. I'm not going to say that there isn't no nobody out there trying to. There are people out there trying. And this is just my my little, you know, contribution, you know. But um, for those out there, I do see that, you know, that, that support the black businesses and minority community that are pushing for that change. And so um, 
I, I don't want to ignore that either. I acknowledge that too. That that's very well true. But we need more of that. That's yeah. the point of this book. We need more of it. Lots and lots of more of it. More people to get involved. More people to become, you know, self and consciously aware of what's going on in society. And we need them to give a damn. Even though you, you can know about it, but you need to you need to care. Give a damn. It's time. Yeah. You know, because this can happen to anybody. Well, again, like, what if this was reversed? What if the paradigms were shipped and this happened to white people instead of black? Yes. What if we lived in that time frame? And yeah. so I'm, I'm very much appreciative and aware of, you know, those companies out there that are starting to become aware, you know, of the injustice and the racism that has happened over time and has plagued our, you know, country and that needs to be dismissed. I appreciate that. Um, and when so, we say too that a, a systemic racism, with, and we're talking about the system, the system that makes everything yeah, work, from school system, government, to the school, government, all of it, where you make sure that you have your kind in charge, your kind getting promoted, your kind ruling those fields in mm -hmm. um, in the system. And when they're ruling those fields and not allowing other races, not just black, but other races, minorities that is within that system, that's when you have unjust rulings. That's when you have voter fraud. Mm -hmm. That's when you have um, the school system where you go to a, a black public school, mm -hmm. they, they teach you absolutely nothing in there. And, and not even only absolutely nothing, the safety wise. You go in that one. That it took me literally thirty minutes to get through the door. I had to get one. Yeah, Mister, indeed, I'm oh. telling you, you're gonna love them. When my book, I'm gonna send you a free copy of my book. You're gonna love it. This book talks about it all. I, I try not to get political or religion about anything, but my mm -hmm. book it, it details it all: the politics, the school, everything. Mm -hmm. it, it touches bases on all of it. So when again you ask that question, what systemic racism to me and, and how it looks in America? I say to you, you know, take a look at the book. That's my. It, it tells you all how I feel about it. Because so you might. Hate about, you, you, I can't wait for you to read. I, I know you're gonna love it. And that's Everything what I wanted to bring up too. Yeah. You're gonna laugh because it's in the book. <laughs> no, I, 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 what I love too was a, a illustration that really stuck with me that you sent me is um, there were white people marching, and they had White Lives Matter T-shirts on. Mm -hmm. um, that's the, the paradigm that's of white lives matter, bitch, please. Yeah. <laughs> that's in the uh, president paradigm. Okay, yeah. and I like that. And, and the reason why I like it and it stuck home with me was because I have uh, a, a friend who was a white man who he's a big Trump supporter. And mm -hmm. uh, but you know, while I met him in college, and him and I real tight in college, real good dude, and. It was deep that now that he was not saying that he's a different man that he's a trump supporter now but it was like and he has about like i, I believe three uh, black and white kids mulatto kids mm -hmm. and he's like you know, two called mulattoes and nottos <laughs> you know, and, and he's like the deep part about this is me him and i were talking through text on uh Basically texting each other about Black Lives Matter and why he's like, I don't know what they talk about Black Lives Matter, all lives matter. I was like, you really don't get mm -hmm. what they're trying to say. And I explained to him why, because his whole thing is he was looking at Black Lives Matter, the movement mm -hmm. of um, the the organization that's ran by a white man. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that, you're missing the point. And when I say I support Black Lives Matter, I'm not supporting that organization. I'm supporting the fact that our lives matter as well, and it needs to be recognized. Exactly. And even with explaining that to him, he still could not say, I was like, yo, he said, people think that I'm racist. And, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you and I are cool. And I was like, you know, you can't even say black lives matter. I was like, say black lives matter. And he was like, you know, all lives matter. And he yeah. couldn't, it, and it was exactly. like, but what's so deep to me and what made me think is like, but this is also the man who has about like two to three uh, multiracial children who are black. And you can't even say that their lives matter as well. Yeah, they're black and white. And, and, and I get it. It's a human thing. Mm -hmm. But it's like saying, you know, we're addressing a particular subject. We're not saying that 
all lives don't matter. Of course, your lives matter just as much as mine. But we're saying that you're not treating our lives as important as you're you're doing your own. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he could not admit to that, him and I haven't spoken since. And this mm-hmm. is a friend I've been for about twenty years. But I think your book. Not just this last thing I wanted to say is I think your book brings up the conversation that you need to have to find out if your friend is really your friend. Exactly. I, I went through a similar situation as you, and, and just to piggyback off of what you said, in my opinion, I think that, you know, the reason why people, those people who say all lives matter, again, that's just their way to deflect and, and not take accountability and admit or accept or acknowledge what happened or what's happening to us now. And so yeah. when, when, some, when I hear somebody say all, all lives matter, that's just them deflecting. And so again, with this book, it, 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 it re- reflects it. It, it, it redirects that, that deflect and brings it back into you know terms of what if this was you. And so there's no way around it. Um, I, I know we, we're coming to an end. I just want to quickly uh, note that we also have our pre-sale coming up week after next uh, as well with our book launch. And then uh, starting in spring 2022, we'll have a book tour. Um, we'll also be doing specials. Our merchandise, our sub-merchandise, um, will be sold on our website as well. Um, what else? You know, follow us on Instagram at Third Eye LLC. I, excuse me, Third LLC I, and then you can visit us at differenceworld.net, spelled D I F E R N T S, then world.net. Um, just, you know, shout out to Mr. D. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Shout out to my illustrator, Anastasia Arnold, um, as well as my nephew for being a part of the book. Uh, everybody out there listening, thank you guys so much. Thank you indeed for having me. I truly appreciate you. And oh, if you'll have me you. again, I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, again, don't forget, yeah. what if a controversial paradigm shift it will be out this month at the end of August. And uh, this book, again, is intended for mature audience only. And so uh, if you cannot take the heat, then don't bother coming to this kitchen. (laughs) I think that's about it. That's all I have to say. I love the energy. And I like to say thank you for coming on my show and adding this positive energy. We have yet to have this type of conversation. Usually my show has been centered around talking about relationships and uh, black love and, and, and relationships just in oh, general. I love those topics. We can talk about, you got to have me back for then because we can talk about that too. Oh, without doubt. Consider it done. We oh, will yes. have different back to talk that talk. Yeah, you've been talk. doing You've been living it up. And, you know, episode five of Ramble, Young Man Ramble, I don't have a title for this episode yet, but by the time this episode comes out, which should be, um thinking about Sunday, I might bring this episode out. Okay. And um, I just man, that something that you said that might be the title of this episode, which is "Go where you're celebrated, not tolerated." Oh yeah, uh, go where you're celebrated, not where you tolerated. Yes, which is a, a, a beautiful quote that uh, I keep with myself. Maybe just because I don't like too many people, but whatever. We'll get that. That's a different topic. <laughs> but um, no thank you. Episode thank five. You, of, awesome, man. Yes, episode five. Yeah. All your success. Sorry, let me put you off. It's all good. So we're here with episode five, Ramble Young Man Ramble with Different. She came with her book, What If? And um, it was, this was very, very deep. This is very, very deep. It, it yeah. challenges you to look into my eyes, challenges you to look from my eyes, challenges you to think more about life in itself, where it's not just about you. It's about everyone coming together, working together. So um, thank you so much for reinforcing that energy, that attitude. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I truly appreciate it. God bless you. God bless everybody out there listening. Don't forget, manifest, plan, prepare for the shit that you want in life, and it's coming to you, no doubt about it. Oh, without doubt. This is your host, Ramble Indeed, on Ramble, Young Man Ramble, Episode 5. Go where you are celebrated, not where you tolerate it. That might just be it. Oh, there it is. Say no more. (laughs) Peace, different. All right. Peace and blessings to you as well. Have a good one, indeed. Yeah, yeah.
back it should go different and i hope you guys enjoyed listening to my audio interview with the podcast ramble young man ramble i had a very good time talking with the host mr indeed about my new book dun, 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 what if a controversial paradigm shift which is available on my website now differenceworld.net so head over on right now and get your copy again what if a controversial paradigm shift was written to inform and constant thought-provoking conversations about systemic racism and injustice in america this is done through graphic but provocative illustrations and what if details, different perspectives on controversial deaths and events that have occurred in America within the African American community. So please again be, be advised that this book is for grown folks only. It's intended for mature audience only. See right there. Da, 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 da. So again, if you can't take this type of heat, don't bother coming to this kitchen. But if so, Go on over to differenceworld.net and get your copy. Uh, what else, you guys? Other than that, um, be on the lookout. Yes, we just did our segment for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Uh, the next segment that we'll do for this month is Breast Cancer Awareness. So be on the lookout for our video with that. Uh, other than that, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, enjoy the book trailer that's at the end of the video. And afterwards, don't forget, whatever it is in life that you want to go after, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And it will surely then come to you. Difference world. Come and learn. Peace. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Illustrations by Anastasia Arnold. Coming August 2021. Go to differenceworld.net.